darkness covered all things, and night was in the middle of its course. Your all-powerful word, O Lord, bounded from heaven's royal throne. Our Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Felicetta Lestio, for the repose of the soul of Matthew Myers, for the repose of the soul of Sister Mary George Luz, for the repose of the soul of Sister Mary Cordia, for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Firmstone, for the repose of the soul of Reynold Lucille, and for the repose of the soul of Sandra Tuck. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On this sixth day within the octave of Christmas, we begin our celebration by calling to mind our sins and asking for God's continued mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we give glory to God as we say together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, we pray, that the newness of the Nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free, for ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, A reading from the first letter of John. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world, for all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride and riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. World and its desire are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. The word of the Lord. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering and come into his court. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. 
Let the sea roar and all that it fills. Let the field exult and everything in it. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. Alleluia. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. The favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. When we were baptized, we were anointed priest, prophet, and king, just as our Lord and Savior was, as it's his baptism we receive as and as his disciples, when we bring heaven to earth and people closer to God, we fulfill our priestly role. When we take the roles of leadership as Catholics, leadership in the church, leadership as parents raising Catholic Christian children, in other roles of leadership, we fulfill our regal or our kingly role. With respect to our prophetic role, Bishop Robert Barron offers us this. What does it mean for the average baptized person to be a prophet? A person is a prophet in the measure that he or she bears the truth of God. G.K. Chesterton said that it is an upside-down world such as ours that the prophet is the one who stands on his or her head so that he or she might see things aright. Does that last definition, as described by Bishop Barron, describe you? We need more prophets in the world today. We need to hear the truth, but in a loving and charitable way always, or the truth goes amiss. Truth for the sake of truth is not the truth. The truth in charity is the Christian's calling. The world is topsy-turvy. It's upside down sometimes, and friends, the world needs us in it, speaking the truth from the world. Truth and charity as we are able to see the future from our vantage point and through the lens of our faith. And it's through that lens of faith that we see what the world can be and what it should be and what it is and what it isn't. Too many of us Christians, we write off the world as too secular or too selfish or too unchristian and believe that the world is doomed. Too many of us spend too much time thinking the end is near, and connect the book of Revelation to our times that we're living now. We cannot afford to do that. In the light of today's gospel, we must exercise more of our prophetic role. As Mary and Joseph present the baby Jesus at the temple, Anna the prophetess, a very simple and ordinary woman, and described as such, she speaks the truth to the holy parents and to all of those who are listening on what she sees and understands the coming of the Son of God to mean for this world. Let us ask ourselves then these questions for personal reflection today. How am I sharing the prophetic vision of the coming of the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Lord and Savior of the world, with those who need to hear it? 
Do I know the way, the truth, and the life as I need to? Or do I need to go deeper in my own understanding? Am I sharing the truth in charity? Or is it merely the truth for the sake of truth? Friends, let us continue to draw nearer to the Lord in these Christmas days. May God bless you. And as we come before the table of the Lord this day, we bring our prayers and our needs to our loving God. The world, the word came into our world as a little child to draw us to the Father. May he be with us during these days to sustain us and guide us. For all of those who've come home for Christmas, may they treasure the love of relatives and friends and find the Lord in our midst. For this we pray to the Lord. For all who are without company in this season, may the Lord ease loneliness and isolation, we pray to the Lord. For those who are without food or warmth, that they may be sustained by us, concerned, and fellow Christians. For this we pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that we may give glory to God and be instruments of peace and joy to others. We pray to the Lord. Kind and loving God, hear and answer these prayers that we bring before you this day and those that remain in the silence of each one of our hearts. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Bernadette, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And as we watch and participate in this Mass from home, let us consider someone that we need to forgive or ask forgiveness from, and may our peace be extended to them. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God. 
God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ Jesus, safe for eternal life. participate in this holy mass from home, we might offer an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, Lord. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated. Let us pray. O God, who touch us through the, our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Take this opportunity on behalf of Father Raymond and myself to uh, assure you all that you continue to be in our prayers, and if there's anything we can do for you, please ask us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about 